Welcome to the Bravo Papers, a safe space for all us Bravo fans who love to analyze, deconstruct, and talk about our favorite Bravo shows ad nauseum. So join me, Bravo and Botox, and we'll catch up on all the Bravo news and read way too much into our favorite shows and Bravo liberties. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Bravo Papers here for your Vanderpump Rules After Show Recap, episode 13. Episode 13 was pretty good. I think it was overshadowed a little bit by the Valley, because the Valley was right after, and they had that insane fight, which... Listen, I'm going to assume that since you're all Vanderpump Rules fans, that probably most of you are watching the Valley. If you're not, you're making a huge mistake. Um, it's so good. Please watch it because it's so good. And on top of that, it's just like, I feel like it's adding layers to Vanderpump Rules. You know, there's some connections. Well, there are connections amongst the two groups and they, you know, the Valley people have things to say in the after show because they hang out with them too. It's just, you know, it's just good all around. So highly recommend. Um, no, this is not sponsored by Bravo or the Valley producers. <laughs> I just really like it. And, uh, you know, I know you love drama, so you got to watch it because there's lots of drama. Okay, so let's get into this episode because we got quite a bit. There's a little bit. No, actually, hang on, I'm just scrolling. Yeah, there's quite a bit. Okay, so first topic to start with, Jax and Brittany. Um, and by Brittany, I mean Katie, but Brittany's involved. <laughs> so Jax and Katie, you know, we had their little spat during episode 13 where, where Jax is like, I don't like you. And Katie's like, well, I don't like you either. And Jax is like, what well, like you? And they just kept going back and forth. And I mean, I loved every second of it. Obviously, I'm team Katie, obviously. Um, but I'm also just team drama and I love that they hate each other because it's hilarious. Okay, so so they get into how all this started. Listen, we all in the Vanderpump Rules world, especially the like OG fans, we all know that something has been up since 2020 or whenever around Stassi's wedding. Um, I can't remember if her wedding was, I think it was after 2020, I think. Anyways, maybe it was before. Okay, sorry. I'm getting off guard, off um, topic, sorry. So the point of the story is that we all remember, because it was like a thing on social media, that Brittany and Jax did not attend Stassi's wedding. And everyone was like, oh, why is that? Because, you know, they were close. Like, they were really good friends. Like, Jax was friends with Bo and obviously Stassi. Brittany and Stassi were close. Like, it was, it just seemed odd right and and then I remember at the time on social media Jax put out a thing being like oh it's not like nothing happened there isn't like some big drama it was just that we couldn't get Cruz's passport in time but that didn't really seem I don't know it just the excuse was a little off like people were like hey you knew about this well in advance you know there's just it just something was off and you could tell like I, I can't remember but there were other clues on social media that there was more to it maybe like coming from Katie's end so that's what they kind of get into here like where did all of this start so Brittany says that in terms of like Jack's confronting Katie at the party she didn't ask him to do that and you know she's like I don't like confrontation and I didn't ask him to go up to her and blah 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 See, this is what kind of pisses me off about Brittany is she's just, I don't know. She's always playing this like sweet, innocent victim type of role. Like, oh, I just happen to be married to, you know, the biggest asshole on the planet. And I love him with all my heart and wanted to reproduce with him. But I don't agree with anything that he says or does ever. And I'm the angel and he's the devil and we just happen to come together. It just, I just don't buy it. 
Like, I don't fully buy this. I think that Britney is kind of passive aggressive. I think she's an enabler of Jax's behavior. I think she doesn't, I think she was pissed at Katie. And I think she was like salty about things. And I think, I think she talks a lot of shit behind closed doors. I really do. Like, I can imagine her, you know, when they're not filming, I can imagine her and Jax like bitching about everyone and her talking a lot of shit. And, you know, but then when she gets to everyone's face, she's all like, he, he, ha, ha, like so innocent within like, you know, exaggerates her accent a little bit. And I think that Jax, you know, spills everything because he is just like crazy and can't help himself. And then and then she justifies his actions or she, oh, I didn't ask him to do that. I didn't ask him to do that. Or, well, he didn't mean it that way. Or, you know what I mean? Like, she always is making excuses. I don't know. I'm just, I don't know. She annoys me. Anyways, Jack says he was pissed because, you know, Katie was spreading rumors. And plus, she had totally cut off Brittany after Stassi's wedding. And he doesn't get why Katie is even mad about them not going to Stassi's wedding and why she can't text his wife. He's like, well, she's just mad to be mad. Okay, so there is, you know, another side to this story. And then Sandoval chimes in, by the way, and he's like, that's an expensive trip, man. And like, you just got a house and you had a child. And then and Jax is like, yeah, you know, so they're already back to their old ways. But the truth is that they canceled at the very last second, which we'll get to. Okay, then Katie says that the days leading up to the wedding, something was off. Basically, they had a group chat or they'd be together and they'd, you know, just be making plans. This is what I'm going to buy to bring with me. Here's a restaurant we can go to, whatever. And whenever they talked about it, Brittany would act really weird and she would just get really quiet and not say anything. And this was happening like for days or weeks or whatever it was leading up to the wedding. Okay. So she kind of, I guess, I don't know, like suspected that there might have been a plan to not go on Jackson Brittany's part. And then literally the morning of, she texts them and is like, oh, my God, we didn't get Cruz's passport in time. You know, and and according to Katie, some lies like trying to cover for themselves. But it was clear that they had just not really planned on going, which. To be fair, I don't think that, listen, I think if somebody chooses to have a destination wedding, you can't be mad at people when they can't go. And Italy, this is not like Mexico, like Sheena, where you can get an all-inclusive and and it's still going to be expensive or cost money, but it's not going to be like crazy. Europe is like you're going to Italy, like you're spending at least 10 G's, but I don't know. It's just, and then you got to like get them a gift or whatever. I don't know. I mean, maybe you don't have to because you paid for a flight. But at the end of the day, it's kind of like, you know, you know all that ahead of time, though. That's the thing. So I think it's okay to not go. What I think is wrong in this case is to lie and fake it as though you are going. <laughs> And then, you know, make up a lie at the last second. Maybe they felt like if they said they couldn't afford it, no one would believe them. I don't know. I don't know what the... Either way, they kind of knew that not going was going to look bad. And this just makes it worse. I mean, this makes it so much worse. Um, Then Jack says... Then we flash back to Jack. And he said they didn't have the passport. But Jack was like, no, someone should go. It's Stassi. You know, maybe Brittany can go with her mom. But then her mom's best friends, this is for real, her mom's best friend's husband died. So it just wasn't in the cards. I, I, I get why your mom can't go because her best friend's husband died. I get that. But why can't Brittany go? Like, why does Brittany have to, like, I just... If Katie and all these other people are going and they're all friends, why can't Katie just go? I mean, why can't Brittany just go with the group that they have this chat with? Like, I don't understand. 
just go for the wedding and then come back and then Jax can stay with Cruz. Or maybe Jax can't handle Cruz on his own. And that's the truth because he's too busy putting things in his nose. I don't know. Okay. Or maybe Brittany doesn't trust him. See, there's other layers to this, right? Probably. I don't know. I'm speculating now. Katie says Jax was also just being an asshole um, on the group chat, like after they didn't show up, like talking about going on a golf trip and all this stuff after he had just like ghosted on the wedding and, and that, you know, making comments that were insensitive to Stassi. Um, Katie says, you know, she was just annoyed with the lies. You know, it wasn't about them not going. It was about the lies and that she just needed a break. Katie says it's also because Jax is just an asshole, which we know. Um, and that by accident, Schwartz had revealed the, <laughs> I guess, okay, so I think we all remember this too. Schwartz revealed Jax and Brittany's baby's name, Cruz, by accident on social media. She said that Jax was, for some reason, mad, he was mad at Schwartz. He was also mad at her for it, even though she had nothing to do with it. And she was in the middle of planning Brittany's baby shower. Katie says Brittany, um, you know, texted her asking her how the move was. I guess, I'm not sure when this was, when she was moving in with Schwartz, I guess, when they first got their house. And Katie says she forgot to text back, but she didn't mean for it to be like permanent. They'll never speak again. But since then, Brittany never texted her again. So I guess Katie's saying it's like, you know, like when a friend texts you and you're like, I'm going to respond to that later. I'm just busy right now. And then you never remember. And then a month goes by and you're like, oh, shit, sorry about that. Like most delayed response ever. You know, it could be that or Katie could be just saying that and Katie could have purposely not texted her back because she's still mad at her and Jack's about the wedding thing. I could really see it going either way. OK, like I like Katie, but I could understand her being annoyed at Brittany and being like, I don't want to be as close friends with this person anymore because they're married to Jax and I and he yelled at me about the Cruz's name thing and he's just an asshole all around. I can understand that. But you know, just say it. <laughs> or or she really did just forget to text her back. Um the other thing I wanted to say to go back to was that um Schwartz did mention during the interview, he goes, no, no, it's not that you guys canceled. It's that you canceled at the last second. So Schwartz is the one who brings that up. Like Jax doesn't actually say it and neither does Sandoval. But Jax, I mean, but uh, Schwartz says it. He's like, it's because we know Schwartz loves him some Stassi. Um, but yeah, I just thought that was interesting that Schwartz like threw that in there. And then that was when Jax is like, well, we didn't have the passport. And then, you know, my mom, my mother-in-law's friend's husband died. So it just wasn't in the cards. You know, that's what he says. So, okay. So, um, okay, where was I? Okay, so then Katie says that she was a little irked that Brittany never texted her when she filed for divorce. Now, here's a situation where I can kind of see both sides. Like, Brittany's thinking, Katie's kind of mad at me about the Stassi thing. You know, I'm going to give her some room to cool off. And then I'm going to kind of like slowly like test the waters by texting her and asking her how the move is. But then she never gets a response back. And then they don't talk for a long time. And then Schwartz and Katie get divorced. By then, maybe Brittany felt like, you know, Katie doesn't like me. The friendship's over. Like, it's not my place. Personally, I would have texted anyways if I was Brittany. But I'm not. But I can also understand why. Like, if we're just looking at this completely trying to be objective without, like, taking sides. Because obviously, I prefer Katie over Brittany. And I think most people do. But... If we're being completely objective, I can kind of understand like, okay, well, I tried once and she never texted me back. If if I was in Brittany's situation, would I text again when my friend had gotten divorced? Yeah, I would because a divorce is a really big deal. Just like I would text if someone had died because, again, you know, our petty shit doesn't matter when those big things happen. That's me. I'm not saying Brittany's like bad for that, I, but I can understand how Katie was still expecting another text. But that being said, you know, Katie should also realize that, 
you know, you didn't respond. And the best way to handle this is to be kind of transparent about your feelings. Like, listen, I was really hurt that for Stasi that you guys didn't come and it seemed like you kind of made up a lie and like that would have worked out probably better for any everyone because they could have just made up and moved past it or maybe not who knows I mean at the end of the day this friend group is if we can call them a friend group but this group is so toxic that they never do things the healthy way because <laughs> that's just this group so Lala says Katie doesn't have the right to be mad because Brittany did reach out and Katie didn't respond. So again, I can understand that side of the argument. Um, Lala says it's hard with Katie because she's because you're never sure if you're going to like send the right text and you're always questioning yourself if you're saying the right thing and Katie's intimidating. It's funny to hear Lala say that because she talks so tough. But she's just. It's really all an act for TV, isn't it? But then she's here like overthinking and humming and hawing about what she says to Katie. Like, okay. So Ariana says that she remembers that Brittany was very sad about the whole situation with Katie. Ariana asked Brittany, um, you know, if, or sorry, asked Katie if Brittany ever reached out after the Jack's yelling incident that we all just watched on the episode this week. And Katie says no. And then she remembers when Jax and Brittany did like their Vanderpump Rules after show watch party. So remember when the season of Vanderpump Rules was crazy and all of a sudden we had Jax and Brittany back on our TV like doing a watch party. Brittany was saying how she had basically in one of those interviews, how she had no idea what Katie was going through with the divorce. And Katie's like, well, you could have picked up the phone. Um, but Katie's like, you know, I'm good having distance because Jax is an asshole. So listen, at the end of the day, this is all Jax's fault. Because, you know, I can try to see the sides of both the women and hmm and ha and go back and forth. At the end of the day, it's hard to be friends when you have like an asshole guy around. Look at like how Tom Sandoval got in the way of a lot of Ariana's friendships. She really did. Ariana would have been friends with a lot of those girls a lot sooner if it, Tom Sandoval wasn't there. But when you have this annoying asshole guy always whispering things in your ear and, and causing drama, it's like it's hard to maintain friendships. That's just the truth. Okay, so let's go into Sandoval versus Sheena. So this was, you know, Sandoval's comment about, oh, you know, you were the other woman or whatever. Okay. So Sheena says he's going to compare it to something I did when I was 21 and single. And, you know, 20 years ago, and I'm with her. I'm with you, Sheena. But then she says this. And I thought he was single. Sheena... I'm I'm never going to believe that Sheena thought Eddie Cibrian was single. I'm just never going to believe it. She's like, I was 20. I wasn't Googling. What? How does being 20 mean you're not Googling? And I'm sorry, but when, when a, a young woman like Sheena is into a guy, not only do you Google, you are deep diving as much as you can. There wasn't as much back then. She's like, I didn't know how to use IMBD. You didn't need to know how to use IMBD. <laughs> it's like, it's so stupid. I just don't believe it. Listen, I'm still not mad at Sheena about that. At the end of the day, Sheena was single. And it's on the person in the relationship to not cheat on their wife, who has two kids, who they have two kids with. That's Eddie's responsibility. There's going to be lots of young 21-year-old Sheenas walking around Hollywood, you know, ready to fuck the next actor because they think it might get them in a movie or that they might marry him and be set up for their life or whatever. That Those women will never not exist. It's up to your man to say no to them. Now, does that make like Sheena have no moral culpability? No, she's still, you know, just morally, it's still wrong to like go with a guy that you know is married. But at the end of the day, it's more his responsibility. Right. And but again, the reason that like, 
you know, Tom Sandoval situation is different, similar, but different is because Ariana and Rachel were friends. I will give Sheena this. She wasn't friends with Brandy. She doesn't know. She wasn't Brandy's bestie. Like they don't like run in the same circle. They're not like hanging out. So it is it is different at the end of the day. And Sandoval knows it's different. He knows it. He was not single. <laughs> he was in a relationship. And not only did he cheat, he cheated with his girlfriend's friend, one of her closest friends. And he knows it. Listen, he knows all this. He just wants to be like, we're all cheaters. We're all liars. Whatever he said to Rachel that we found out about the beginning of the season when he was like, life is a lie. Like, that's the like delusional philosophy he lives under. And she says, you know, he was in a relationship. He was 41. It's absurd. It infuriated the shit out of me. Well, I don't think it infuriated you that much because I already saw a preview for next week. And spoiler alert, you know, Sheena's ready to forgive him again. So Brock says it's something that still haunts Sheena, like the the Eddie Cibrian thing. And that, you know, she's still getting trying to get away from it that since 2007, which I get that. Like, I get how, you know, you make a most people you make stupid mistakes in your early 20s and no one except your close people know about it. And like you can kind of go on like nothing ever happened. Hers just everyone knows about. So yeah, you do kind of have a label. But at the end of the day, if you're going to have, you know, some of the fame and benefits that come along with that, then yeah, you do have the negative stuff like that. Just like when you make a mistake, it follows you more, right? So Sandoval's like, I know what I did was horrible, but it just seemed like everyone's acting like I murdered somebody. Um, and he just felt like the reaction was over the top. And he felt like the group just piled on and it was relentless. And, you know, his this group of friends were just spearheading all the hate and etc. I don't think they've piled on that much. Like, I think he's gotten off pretty easy this season. Did he get off easy at the reunion? No. Did he get off easy in like public opinion between last season and this season? No, he hasn't. But in terms of like this group, he's gotten off pretty easy. <laughs> like I actually, it was like Erica Jane, like she kept saying how she was like crucified and all this. Girl, you had it so easy just because of your situation. Like there's other casts and situations where she would have been hammered so much harder. Like, she's lucky she's on Beverly Hills. Like, she's lucky she wasn't on, like, New York with, like, Ramona or something. It just drives me crazy. Like, and Sandoval is on the type of cast that will pile on and call you on stuff, but he, you know, the person who would probably have gone the hardest at him was fired. The two, actually, Stassi and Jax. So he actually was kind of lucky. Imagine Stassi and Jax were at that reunion and were part of all this, like in a real way. Yes, did they talk about it on their podcast and make comments, et cetera? Yes, they did, but it's not the same. Imagine they were on the show at the reunion. It would have been a whole different... And Kristen Doty was there the whole time. Like, yeah, I rest my case. So then Sandoval says he never gave Sheena shit about like what she did with Eddie or whatever he's like the most I did was I just looked at her and I was like Sheena like come on that's that's all he said he did he's like but I never judged her and he's like I know it's different but he's like he'll never be able to give anybody this is what he says he goes it's just you know it's like I'll never be able to give anybody shit for cheating even in like 15 years from now okay so that's why he's upset because he can't give anyone shit for cheating because now he cheated <laughs> he's so annoying he's like now that I got caught I can't act like I'm morally superior to everyone when it comes to cheating like I used to with Jax um because now everyone knows that I'm full of shit and I'm really pissed off about that like he's so annoying um James says she had the right to be livid you know she was close friends with Rachel and Tom, and she was made to look like a fool. Um, he's correct about that. Then we have Jax and LVP, their whole beef. So Jax maintains that he doesn't know what superf superfluous means, which I believe him. I think LVP just like, you know, 
used a synonym for whatever Jack said because she couldn't remember exactly what he said. I mean, she's getting older. That could happen. Um, but I fully believe Jax doesn't know what that means. Jack says he felt hurt because he was in this, as in VPR, from the start. And he felt like he had a huge role in creating this masterpiece. And that's what he calls Vanderpump Rules. Listen, I got to agree with him on this. He did have a big role in creating the masterpiece that is Vanderpump Rules. He had a huge role. I mean, him and Stasi were the stars. Let's be real. Um, yeah, at least for the first six seasons, and those were the best ones. So, you know, don't get me wrong. Season 10, they made a they made a big comeback. But anyways, <laughs> they were close, he said. They had moments. He said, like, she even, like, complained to him when she was having fights with, like, the other housewives on Beverly Hills. Oh, my God, I would love to be on a fly, fly on the wall for that. Um, he's like, you know, we had a real relationship. And he's like, I know I shouldn't have said, like, it's my show. He's like, I just meant, like, I had a huge role in it. Um, and that, you know, he was hurt once he was off the show. He felt like she just, she was always, like, faking it and that she never really gave a shit about him. She never texted either of them or said anything when they had crews, etc. I kind of get that. Like, I get what Jax means. I can see how LVP, how you would feel like you were used. Like, you would feel like she only cared about you as far as what ratings you could bring with your messiness. And then once you're off the show, it's like she used you and threw you in the garbage. I can understand that. Now, that being said, Jax acted like a complete asshole on his last season. And he was a total asshole to LVP. So I don't know, maybe, you know, he should have sent her a text first apologizing for acting like a dick. Like he really got himself fired with his ego. And that's like the big mistake he made. Was he part and have a huge role in creating this masterpiece? Yes. But you're never bigger than the masterpiece. That's what every Bravo liberty needs to remember. It doesn't matter how, in, how much of a cog you are in the machine and how important of a cog you are and what you've brought. What matters is like, what are you bringing now? Right? And what matters is, are you, you know, if you get, if your ego goes nuts, you know, everyone is disposable, every single person, right? And you know how we know that? Because Nini got fired, right? There was really like no one bigger than Nini in terms of like the way that they became a star, like beyond the show. And even Nini was able to get fired. Right. Like Vicky Gunvalson also thought the, the same thing about OC. Right. It's just like anyone can get fired. Um, OK, so. Where was I? Sorry. OK, so Brittany says that when they had the baby, she did send a gift LVP. Then Jack says it's only because he called her out. Because I guess he's saying he like called LVP out on social media about like he, you know, she didn't even uh, acknowledge Cruz's birth. And then he's like hours later, a gift showed up at, at our house. And then LVP's like, no, I just hadn't. It just hadn't gotten there yet or whatever. Again, I don't know. Right. We have like Lisa who knows how to manipulate. But we have Jax who lies a lot, too. So it's like, OK, I don't also just don't really care. It's time to move forward. Jax felt like, you know, how dare you? Because I gave my heart and soul to the show. Okay. I mean, they can all kind of say that, right? Like, as much as like, yes, Jax and Stassi were the stars then, you know, again, if the show starts to like plummet right now, it can be canceled. They can all be out of work. Like, it's never a guarantee. So then they talk about Schwartz and his midlife crisis. Um, Kristen and Sheena say he's definitely having one. Um, and he only gets tattoos when he's in times of crisis. And now he got a tattoo. Jack says he's never had a midlife crisis. Mm, I think cheating on your wife probably falls in that category. Um, but it could come. He's like, I'm just trying to keep my marriage intact. Oh, you're doing a great job, Jax. So they say... 
uh, Jesse from the Valley is probably having one. <laughs> and then they go to Jesse and he's like, well, I was bidding on like a, you know, vintage convertible while filming. And then Lala says that she thinks, you know, she's like, I don't know if Jesse is having a midlife crisis. He just seems like he has little man syndrome. Okay. And then the other thing that a lot of people were harping on is that in this interview, Lala says she loves a guy who is wide and has a thick neck. And she's like, I will climb that like a tree. And everyone's like, ooh, that's like Brock. I'm like, okay, calm down. Um, I'm sure that's making Sheena feel so much better. Okay, so <laughs> Sheena, poor Sheena. Okay, so then they talk about the whole breadwinner thing. And basically, Brittany says after they got fired from Vanderpump Rules, she was making a lot more than him. Because I think she had like a deal with Jenny Craig or something. And she was just getting a lot more like influencer type of stuff. Um, Also, because like, I think mostly because people, I think just didn't, people really hated Jax at that time. So I can understand how brands would not be falling all over themselves for Jax. I think now he seems to be able to get things like we saw in the Valley with his like balding hair loss thing. Um, Lala says Sheena has always chosen men where she's the alpha. And you'll be the one running around catering to Sheena's needs. <laughs> Which is so not surprising because Sheena is so, Sheena is like one of the most self-involved. Sheena is the most, she's not a narcissist. I'm not going to go that far because people throw that around way too much. But oh my God, is she self-involved. She's one of the most self-involved people on television and she never learns and it's very entertaining. Lala says, you know, if Brock had his own business and he was like working, you know, set hours and it wasn't flexible, she says it would actually throw Sheena off her rocker. So it's actually a good thing for them. And Sheena kind of co-signs this. She says she doesn't want uh, Brock to have like a limited schedule and have to work a lot of hours because they do things together and she needs him there. So... <laughs> The Valley guys say Brock is out hustling. He's not just sitting at home, you know, like doing nothing like many of us assume. Um, and Sheena says people think he's just living off of her, but he's actually the hardest worker she knows and that she's ever been with. Okay, listen, if Brock's hard work is like being Sheena's assistant or helping Sheena with stuff with her career, I don't think that's a bad thing. I think it they just maybe need to be more transparent about it. But either way, Brock says he wants to be in TV and TV production. And, you know, they're at all these events and all these things and that he's always meeting people and making connections. And he would be a fool not to try and capitalize on this opportunity. So, yeah, so it seems like he is trying to, you know, parlay his relationship with Sheena and his connection to this but I don't know is he going to be good at this does he have talent for this I, I don't know maybe he does we'll see Sheena says he has two shows he's developing and he's always thinking ahead uh, but it's good how much he's with Summer because he's also raising her like it's not like he's just like sitting there all day like staring at the wall he's actually like you know raising his daughter which I, I don't think that a man staying at home all day with his daughter is bad if everyone is good with that. But it doesn't seem like that's what Brock wants to do. It seems like he wants to work. So I'm not saying he's not like contributing because child care is definitely contributing. But again, you know, it is hard to launch a career when you have a kid climbing on you. That is true. <laughs> he does need, you know, I understand why he wants someone to watch their daughter more. I get that. Um, but again, you know, it's kind of one of those things like this is like sort of nepotism, but not like it's like Brock just happens to be married to Sheena. So he just happens to meet these people and have these connections like that doesn't necessarily equal success or longevity. However, it doesn't necessarily not equal that. So it's one of those things like time will tell, I guess. Okay, then we have James and Hippie. Um, formerly the artist dog, formerly known as Graham. Okay, so James says he was going to be hippie, was going to be euthanized days before he got him. So he really doesn't want hippie to be afraid. 
he's trying to be a good dog owner and it's his responsibility, but it did cause a lot of arguments with Allie, both on camera and off. Um, then they go to Nia from the Valley who says, you know, your exes are in the past. So having your ex's dog show up would be hard. And it's some and Danny would never, which I just love. I love when she I love it. I love Danny and Nia. Okay. And you know, it would be hard because it is a connection to your ex. And it's like all of a sudden your ex's dog is your responsibility and they're in the past and now they're not. So, you know, it's like you have to like deal with a part of the ex in a way, right? Um, Nia says Danny would not do that, especially springing on her, springing it on her like a surprise like James did. I don't really think it was a surprise. I think that scene was kind of like fake. I think Allie knew about it. I think they... Because, like, her, Allie's acting in that scene was not good. It was pretty clear. She already knew that. She's like, is that Graham? Like, I don't know. She didn't really seem that surprised. So Janet says, well, you know, we're, we're nice and friendly with some of our exes, but that's it. And, you know, and sometimes it's hard to avoid. She's like, you know, like, Sheena slept with Jason. I was like, excuse me? <laughs> what? So yeah, Sheena slept with Janet's husband, Jason, like before they were together, back when Sheena was single, which again, like not a big deal. They were all single. It was before Janet was with him. Fine. But okay. I mean, Jason is hot, so I can't blame Sheena. I, I just can't blame her. Okay. Good on you, Sheena. Okay. Um, but you know, they all say you don't, buy a car, you don't bring home an animal. Those are the kind of things you got to speak to your partner first. Um, James says that they've worked it out better now. They can all cuddle in the same bed and, you know, things are better than they were. He says, according to James, who knows? Um, then they start talking about the whole nanny thing. This is the last topic, the whole nanny thing with Brock and Sheena and Brittany says that whenever she's with them, what they usually are fighting about if they're fighting is Sheena's mom. And they don't realize, though, Brittany says how lucky they are to have a grandma right there all the time who can watch the baby. Because she's like, my mom lives far away. We had to find a babysitter at only like a year and a half old. And it was really hard to find someone we trusted and all that kind of stuff, which I have to go with Brittany here in the sense of like, if you do not have parents who can help you or family, like there's a reason that that saying it takes a village to raise a child exists. It really, really does. It just really, really does. It is so hard, especially the first like two to three months are brutal. And if you don't have anyone and you can only rely on like hired help and you're not like the rich you're not the level of rich of like, you know, Paris Hilton, where you can hire like full time, like professional nannies who like live in your home and sign NDAs and all that. Like, I, I don't think that she I definitely don't think Sheena and Brock are that. It's like, you know, you it is hard. It is hard when you have no support. Right. So I can understand like Brittany being like, don't take that for granted. Right. And there has been times where I've been like, Brock, like you're kind of really lucky that you have this especially since you're Australian and your family is all way far away like you're lucky you have Sheena's mom close by because if you had no one you'd really be screwed um but again I don't know how Sheena's mom is and I get the impression from Brock that maybe she's not that nice or her and Brock don't like each other or whatever I don't know but I don't know if that's I don't know, maybe I shouldn't assume she's not nice because it's only Brock who says that, like, oh, she's so critical of you. But then I'm like, maybe it's because she doesn't like Brock. So Brock's like trying to plant the seeds on camera that it's just that Sheena's mom sucks. I could see Brock doing that. I don't trust these men ever as far as I could throw them. So Brittany says her mom, oh, sorry, I already said that. Nia says they were lucky. They had a lot of family around, like her mom, aunts, etc. Now they have a nanny for like a couple hours a day who comes in and gives them a chance to like go work out or do whatever um, without kids like climbing all over them. And that it would be a good thing for Brock and Sheena to do because it can really help your relationship, which totally it can. 
Um, and again, these are all parents whose kids are not in school yet. You know what I mean? Like it's, it is kind of foreign to me because, you know, as a regular person, whatever, like I'm like, once the kids were at like one year old, I had to go back to work and my husband was already back at work and they're going to daycare. Like it wasn't about like a nanny. And it's like, it's about like, let's go to daycare and socialize them as well. Like, and again, maybe if I could afford, maybe if I was rich and I could afford a nanny to come into my home who also like maybe prepped dinner and did stuff like that. I mean, yes, would I do that? Of course I would. But it's like sending your kid to like, you know, a whatever, like a preschool or something like that. Like, is that not an option? Or a daycare? I don't know. I don't know what the situation is. Like, I'm looking at this from like the standpoint of like where I live. I mean, it's very goddamn expensive here. Don't get me wrong to send your kid to childcare. But like, I just feel like, I guess it's all Sheena's anxiety, which I understand. I do understand. I never had that anxiety. Like I have anxiety, but I just didn't about daycare. Like I had it about other stuff, but yeah. So I don't know. But I understand like really, really caring about where you're sending them and like looking into it and doing all that. It just, it seems like Sheena's is like next level. Like she's really having trouble with that. So, you know, it seems like Brock is maybe also going stir crazy at home too much because you do so when you're with a kid all the time and you're doing kids stuff, it, it's incredibly hard and boring at the same time. That's what no one tells you. And it's so true. And you want to talk to adults and be challenged again and feel like you have like your own identity and purpose and stuff like that. And like, I can understand that desire. So I do see I do see lots of sides to this. Here I am like talking about I'm like going with my own experience as a mom. But honestly, it's just so complicated with kids. They add so many layers to it. And it is so hard because you feel like because they are just like your become your everything and I think you know I see the sadness in Sheena but I also see how Brock wants to like wants them to still have like their adult life and adult time as well which I like some people are like oh it's because he's like a deadbeat dad it could be that it really could be that he's just not that into being a dad and that he's like an opportunist and it could be all those worst case scenarios it also could be that he's the type of parent who wants like kid time and also really values adult time because I am that type of parent like love my daughter more than myself I will jump in front of a bus for her but that being said I have no interest in being like a full-time like stay-at-home mom not because I think there's anything wrong with it it's just not for me like I have so much respect for women who do it because I think it is the hardest thing ever so like, cause it is so tough and it's not for everyone. So I can understand if he's, if that's not for him and he's home all day and he's like, we have the money to hire a professional so I can go find my passion, et cetera, and purpose. Like I can understand that. That's me being very generous though. And assuming, you know, taking everything Brock says at face value, which I'm always careful with there's always an asterisk at the end with the Vanderpump Rules men because God knows what else they're up to but all that being said Brock needs to be more just patient with Sheena so then Jesse Michelle Jesse not Michelle I'm sure Michelle would not approve of him telling this story Jesse tells this story that's like why the hell would you ever tell this story on national television or Bravo's website or whatever? It just sounds, the optics of it, it just, it sounds so bad. Um, and now it's out there and you can never take it back. And everyone already sees that Jesse and Michelle are terrible. This does not help. Okay. So they went to another country. I think it was Spain or wherever on vacation. And they had Isabella with them. And I guess they had some kind of childcare situation set up with someone they'd interviewed and all this stuff so they could like go out on their own or whatever. Anyways, that person fell through. 
So they ended up chit-chatting with like a hostess at a restaurant. And the hostess was like, oh, I have a daughter around the same age. You know, my mom looks after her all week. My mom's 43 or whatever. And they were like, okay, can we bring Isabella? And the hostess was like, sure. And then this is how Jesse says it, by the way. Then Jesse says, and then we dropped off Isabella there for the week while we did our thing. And we were like, here you go. Bye. And he even is like, this sounds so bad. Yeah, it does, Jesse. It sounds really bad. <laughs> it sounds really, really bad. I don't know if they just left her there for a little bit each day while they did a dinner or something. Or if they literally took her there and she was staying there overnight. I don't know. Either way is not good. Why would you do this? And also, why would you then share it? It just seemed like, and Liz, I am not one to parent shame or mom shame. But this is, this is odd. I'm just shocked they felt comfortable to do this. Like, this is wild. Even for Jesse and Michelle, I'm shocked. And I don't have like a high opinion of them. Okay, so let's end on that note. There's a note to end on. Um, again, this is why you need to watch The Valley if you don't, because there's people like this on the show that you can watch. <laughs> so I hope you all enjoyed this recap. And we have episode 14 coming up. How long is this season? Like, let's look it up. How? Because... I'm really, how many episodes will season 11 of Vanderpump Rules be? Okay, let's see. When is the finale? Okay, it seems like the finale will likely air in June 2024. Oh, God, that seems so long. With 20 episodes in total. Okay, that's pretty normal. For what we would expect. Um, considering what the ratings are. The ratings are so high. They're going to do it. But I'm just like. Okay so this really drives me crazy. Why did they already film the reunion? And usually they take questions from the audience. Like Andy puts out a tweet. Where he's like. We're getting ready to film the whatever reunion. You know post your questions below. And they use a lot of those questions. And they actually do. They never did that. And it's pissing me off because I know what they're doing. Like I'm asking like I don't know, but I do know. It's because they're trying to control the narrative. They're going to give Sandoval and these guys softball questions. They're probably filmed the reunion before, you know, the rest of the season played out. And the rest of the season playing out has people like Lala, etc., putting their foot in their mouths on social media and making everything worse. And then the after shows and, 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 and now they can kind of get away scot-free from a lot of that. And it just sucks. Like, I feel like they're doing it to help Sandoval and Schwartz and, you know, Lala and whoever get a better edit and not such a tough reunion. I don't think it's going to work out. I think the reunion is still going to happen. and. People are still going to be like team Ariana and Katie for the most part. And Tom is still going to come out looking like an a-hole because he just can't help himself. And that's it. So we will see. But it is, it's very strange behavior for them to do this. And I don't like it. Okay. So let's wrap up there. And I will see you all uh, in about a week for the next episode. Until then, you are now in the know for everything Vanderpump Rules. Bye. Thanks for listening, everyone. Your support really means everything to me. And this show wouldn't be possible without you, the listeners. So please, if you enjoy the podcast, leave a five-star rating and subscribe so you don't miss an episode. For more, you can join my Patreon, patreon.com slash bravoandbotox, 
And for $5 a month, you'll get four extra podcast episodes a month. You'll also get early releases of Bravo Paper episodes and more. Please also subscribe to my YouTube channel at The Bravo Papers and follow me on Twitter, Instagram, at Bravo and Botox and at The Bravo Papers. If you'd like to buy me a coffee, you can at buymeacoffee.com slash Bravo and Botox. You know, send your love through some much needed caffeine. And any guest that was on today's episode will be in the show notes, all their social media and contact information. So thank you so much, everyone. Keep overanalyzing Bravo. Bravo.